Hi guys. Um, so the video I'm going to show you is from a friend, very good friend of mine, Richard, uh, from Frontline Kitchen. He um, is going to show you an, a little uh, FPV masterclass on the difference between good and bad quality drones used on the front line. Um, so yeah, Richard's a, a friend of mine, been you know known each other quite some time. He's got a little operation that he runs out of Lviv. Um, a lot of guys on Twitter may know Richard, uh, he's quite popular on Twitter, uh, but he's given me the permission to share this video just to show you and, and maybe teach you a little bit about, you know, FPV warfare and how it's evolving and, you know, the, the, the drones that are actually used on the front line. A um, little bit different, but, you know, let's mix the channel up a little bit as well. Um, as for the radios, I managed to order the radios for the guys. Uh, I will be fundraising for some more though. Um, I think whilst they're cheap, it'll be good to, to try and get them. Um, everybody knows I do get the cheapest ones in Europe. Um, nobody in Ukraine gets them cheaper than me. Uh, with Because I, I do get looked after by the, uh, by the actual uh, company that supplies them. Uh, so thank you to everybody who donated. I really appreciate it. I can't say thank you to you all personally. Because you know, I'll be there a long time. But enjoy the video, guys. Thank you. I am in the very rare position of owning a Ukrainian drone factory, which you think would be great news, apart from the fact it doesn't pay anything and you have to work very long hours. But it does give me exclusive access to many drone teams across the front lines of Ukraine. And one of the things we asked them was, yes, we know the quality of the drones we're sending you, but what is everyone else sending you? And I want to do a little test for you. Before, before I even show you the differences. Can you, left or right, tell which one's ours and which one is a drone from the other drone factory? Can you? Well, I shall show you. Uh, what you'll see here is, if I can get it to focus correctly, is the wiring of other drones that are on the front lines of Ukraine. As you can see, they do this very interesting wiring on the outside. Um, so it's going into the board from this direction rather than from the inside. And the wire here, as you can see, if I can get it to focus correctly, maybe I'll put my hand behind it, is so long that this blade hits it. And that was actually what led this drone to fail. So, the wires haven't been cut short enough, which means they can get entangled in the rotor blades here. Um, the actual wiring on the top board, which you 100% won't be able to see unless you can peer through these gaps, uh, the wires, the smaller connecting wires, aren't actually fully soldered on. So when there's vibration of the thing flying in the sky, um, it will mean that this will disconnect because these are very, very high vibrations when they're flying. Um, this will disconnect and then either you'll lose a video feed, you'll uh, lose your uh, radio transmission, um, or one of the motors will stop working. So that's very, very important as to why you need good quality soldering. Uh, the next thing that you'll see is I can make this whole frame flex. And the reason behind this is they are using one of the Mark IV frames. And that means you only have the bottom supporting plate, uh, but you don't have a top supporting plate. So that, that means that these arms are loose. And once again, vibrations, lots of weight, uh, means that the pilot doesn't have as much stability when they are flying towards the target, which is not good news, of course. Um, once again, the antenna positioning along the arm here means that it's less likely to get signal because when you're turning, you can be blocked by the actual drone itself. Same thing with the antenna. We always like to keep it as far away from the body of the drone um, so that you don't have any interference because the battery is placed right here. So you want it as far back. Um, another thing is they are using the cheaper uh, Solo Tank, which you'll see here. Uh, this is without a fan, so therefore it's prone to overheating if you're doing anything more than a couple of kilometers. Um, obviously overheating means it's less efficient, um, and then the video feed starts crackling out there. Um, it seems like their capacitor might also be a little bit too small. Uh, and the crazy thing is, is this is a company. This is a government drone. 
and I'll cover up some of the barcode here so you can't get them in trouble. But this is what the Ukrainian government has been buying and sending to the front lines. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Why? Um, the Ukrainian government put out a thing and they said, we need as many drones as possible. And there were lots of cunning business people out there that said, well, you need drones, right? Um, but you didn't put anything in your contract about quality assurance. So we can send these to you, but they don't have to fly, right? It's just, you need to have them on your balance sheet. So all of our guys across the front lines, unfortunately would get, you know, a hundred, a thousand of these or so on their balance sheet. They wouldn't fly or they would fly really poorly. And then the government goes, oh, like, what, what, what happened? Uh, I mean, we sent you loads of drones. Um, we've done our job. Uh, your job was to hit the targets. And they go, yeah, but you've sent us things that don't fly or that they have to spend hours and hours reworking on the front lines because it's a lot harder to redo the solder um, once it's already been done. It's very, very, so much easier to just do it straight off from the beginning. So now we bring in this beauty and I think you can tell which one this is. This is one of our drones. So as you can see here, all of that wiring is perfectly tied to the frame itself. And then once again, you look back over here to this drone. Maybe if I move my head out the way, it will focus. And you just see these loose wires coming off, sprawled all over. And then we go back to this absolute beauty, this masterpiece. And as you can see, what we do is we run the wires all the way up. It's very important actually that we tape the wires to the frame rather than using cable ties and that's to avoid the pressure cutting into the wires, which once again can affect reliability over time. Uh, and then we take the wires inside of the drone and then connect it to the flight controller from this direction. And if you can see the soldering dots there, they are a thing of absolute beauty and we take such pride in this. Okay, so heading on to the back of the drone, here is where you will find um, our RX um, <sighs> receiver not transmitter. This one's the transmitter, this one's the receiver. Always got to remember that. Only one of them sends. Um, on the back and it's pushed away from the drone to give it a better chance and for as many angles as possible to pick up the signal. Uh, and then yes, of course, we have our beautiful cherry on the back here, which is on a custom 3D printed um, piece that we attach to the back of the drone. And we are using the Rush Max Solos. So this one has a fan um, and has a much higher power to it. 2.5 2 watt. Um, yes, so that is our beautiful, beautiful drone. And this one was made by Misha. Uh, as you can see, everything, quality, attention to detail. I'll show you one final thing. This is a little bonus surprise extra. Yes. <laughs> This was actually said to the front, this was made by a company uh, and sold to the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, and don't forget, like all of these people, all these other drones I've shown you, they cost double, if not triple, what we're putting out there. Um, plastic frame, as you can see, complete flex. So you put any weight on this at all, and then the whole drone flying profile is completely unhinging off the wall. Um, you can see the motors that they're using too small, the wires are too small, so these can actually overheat and burn through, melting the wires. Um, what else? They do have a, a Rush Max uh, with the fan in here, um, but if the rest of it's not very good, there's not really much point in having a good video transmitter. And I'll just show you, you can probably see from there, the quality of the soldering here. Once again, look at that. And then have a look at this. And this is on every single drone, as you saw in the video yesterday uh, of the drones that we sent out. Every last bit of soldering we're doing, it is the best quality. German manufacturing, of course, uh, to the highest degree. Um, so yeah, this is another one of their drones. Um, would not recommend in the slightest because it needs to be able to carry weight and it needs to be able to fly with a good profile. Anything that's like a plastic or plastic composite, no. You need the rigidity of the carbon frame and of course you have to make sure you get the correct one which I'll show you here has one plate on the bottom you have the arm and then you have the plate above that and that is for the rigidity um, of the whole flight performance um, on this one you can see 
It's got the bottom plate, it's got the arms, and it's got no top plate. It's only got a joining bit between the two arms, which means that you do have that movement uh, between. So I can flex this whole thing. Can you see how this arm is just wobbling around? No. I'll show you ours once again. You try and flex ours, you can't. <laughs> you will literally break your arm before you can break this um, or make this flex in any way. So this is why our guys absolutely love our drones because they give them the complete flight characteristics that they want. They can put any weight on here that they like and this drone is gonna fly like a dream. Um, very stable platform, incredibly, incredibly well manufactured. Every last bit quality checked. That's what the green stick is for. Uh, custom 3D printed parts in the Ukrainian flag. How, how much better can you get? I mean, it's meant to be this way up, right? <laughs> I blame Keith for the 3D printing on that. Um, and custom frequency every single time. So we have a manufacturer that uh, makes a custom frequency because of course the Russians are always uh, finding out the frequencies and then jamming them. Um, so we just change those frequencies up and then ours can actually fly. Where uh, what you'll have uh, that will be an issue is you have these standard frequencies. So this is a 915 megahertz. Um, the Russians already know that there are thousands of these. They just jam them straight away. So once again, this drone, unless you're changing the frequency, it will not fly. There is no point in it. You just throw it away. Um, so it involves so much reworking on the front lines. And our guys want to be flying drones. They want to be killing Russians. They don't want to be uh, sat in a workshop uh, re-soldering someone else's work because they just didn't send the right thing in the first place. So this is the difference. With our drones that we're getting to the front, these guys take them and they strap, a, a strap the, our battery, which we provide to them, onto the top. They strap the explosives onto the bottom and then fly it straight away. We've done all the programming for them. We've put all the correct frequencies on there for them. We've given them the best chance with the best quality product in all of Ukraine to hit the mark. So uh, yeah, please continue supporting this fundraiser and we will get as many of these built as possible. And I hope showing you the realities of what our guys are getting on the front um, scares you to the realities of like, what our guys have to go through, you know? Um, they're having to deal with these shit quality drones because they don't have a lovely German on hand who has a striking attention to detail and will never let a single drone go out unless it's been checked multiple times. And of course, our amazing Ukrainian builders. Thank you to Misha for this awesome drone. Okay, I hope that was informative. I hope that helped you guys out and Slava Ukraini.